Hello there, my beautiful pumpkins, and welcome back to Divine Authenticity, my podcast, which this episode, just like a few others, is actually being made into a video rendition as well. So if you like this video or this podcast, there's a video and or there's the podcast. Uh, if you don't know or you're unaware, I put out new podcast episodes on my podcast, Divine Authenticity, every Tuesday and every Friday, where we talk about everything from holistic health to to astrology, to outdated ideas, to authenticity, to all kinds of topics. Hormone health as well makes it in there sometimes. Spirituality, sex magic, we've talked about. Um, it's a good time. The podcast is a good time. So if you like this, make sure you check out the corresponding. And if you really enjoyed my podcast, please make sure that you join the Patreon. Even if you join at the 222 tier, like every little bit helps to help me to continue to create this podcast. So if you enjoy this, check it out. There's all kinds of fun content over there uh, where we do uh, weekly energy readings. There's a card of the month. There's a book club. I do workshops in the Patreon as well, and you get them cheaper if you join the Patreon. I like sell those as a standalone as well, but you pay more for it if you don't just come to the Patreon and get it there. So um, just saying there are lots of benefits to joining the Patreon and it supports me in creating more podcast videos and just the podcast in general. So please check it out. But let's go ahead and talk about this Aries new moon that is coming up on October 9th. So I'm really excited about this. I love Aries energy. Aries is our cardinal fire sign and it can be very intense, very headstrong. Sometimes things will surface and come to a head that maybe we weren't always ready for. But I think the most important thing to note about an Aries full moon is that number one, full moons represent releasing and the closing of a chapter. So I want you to think back to March of this year and what intentions you were setting at that time, late March into April. What intentions were you setting into your life and what were you doing at that time? What were you hoping for? What were you dreaming and scheming about? And over these last six months, did those things come into fruition? And if they didn't, how can you reevaluate here? That's like the first point I wanna make. The second thing is, is Aries is our cardinal fire, right? Very passionate, headstrong, driven, forward momentum. A lot of physical exertion comes to mind when I think about the astrological sign of Aries. And so this is a closing of chapters on on our own personality, on how our personality is perceived by others, on how uh, we do things physically for ourselves. This can be down to an actual exercise regimen or how we actually just take care of and nurture our physical body. Because Aries is the ruler of like, basically to me, it's like the energy of like, our physical well being, and it represents the head as well as just like the body in general. So, I do feel like this is a closing of a chapter on how maybe we've even treated our body over the last six months. Um, this can be a closing of identity around that as well. Now, I do have the astrology chart pulled up for this little astro update, and the thing that I want to say is we do still have Jupiter in retrograde, Saturn in, in retrograde, Uranus in retrograde retrograde and Neptune in retrograde, as well as Chiron. Now, both Jupiter and Chiron are in retrograde in the sign of Aries while this is going on. So this to me, if we, because we have basically this beautiful little, um, I can't think of the word. It's not, is it conjunct? I think it's conjunct is the word I'm looking for. Having all of these major points in Aries along with a full moon is gonna activate them. So where do we feel like we have been repressed? Where do we feel like we're not able to expand as Jupiter is still in retrograde and maybe we haven't seen such a dial up of abundance or blessings and how can we create more of that? And Chiron, this is about the healing of the self especially during a full moon. Full moons are all about releasing and healing. So when it comes to how we talk about our physical vessel, how we talk about ourselves, this is all going to come up very big for this full moon. And obviously it's also going to transit everybody differently, meaning based off of your rising sign, 
it's gonna hit you differently. Um, that's how I do a lot of my intention setting and my releasing is based off of the rising, which I would highly encourage you listen to my moon magic episode that I put out uh, last week. There's a video for it and an audio for it. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think it's episode 103. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's episode 103. If you want to get into like the nitty gritty of how you can calculate your specific transit with this full moon, because it's easier than you think. And you can actually create like the roadmap of your life every single year using that method. And basically what I'm trying to get at here though, is it will hit everybody differently. So, um, I happen to enjoy fire moons. I feel like because I am a Sagittarius rising, I am a fire sign rising. I operate and navigate through the world with that. Uh, I happen to like the excited high intensity energy of fire moons. Whenever we have a Sagittarius Aries or Leo newer full moon, I enjoy that time. However, I did also pull some cards on this full moon because I wanted to know specifically from me intuitively what y'all need to know about this full moon. So the first thing I'm using the tarot of haunted house, which is one of my favorites, especially for this time of year, the significator we receive is the nine of wands. And if you're watching the video, you can see them, but just trust me here with the audio. It's beautiful. But the nine of wands, this is about like letting your passion really fuel you right now, letting your passion fuel you and not giving up. Even if you feel like your passion might be dwindling, like for some people, it's going to feel like it's dwindling and you are like, gosh, do I really have to keep going? And it's going to be such a slog. <laughs> but for some of you, it's going to feel like, yes, I have that final push to keep going, to keep doing something and committing to myself. And Something else though is quickly followed by that nine of wands. We have the tower here and this does not surprise me at all coming into an Aries full moon because Aries definitely is a very headstrong sign is the sign that like is known to combust and not to say that all Aries people are hot headed because we have a whole chart that makes us up, you know, but I do feel like with this hot headed nature, thankfully we are no longer in Mercury retrograde by this time. So that's definitely going to be helping us to not be there. But, um, we also will have Venus beautifully moving into the sign of Libra out of Virgo. So during this full moon, I do feel like our relationships won't be as crazy. I feel like this is more about ourselves, our internal fire. And we're feeling like the walls are closing in, but really it's, we just need to make one more final push on some aspect of life. I don't necessarily want to give a specific here because I feel like, again, for each individual based off of your rising, this is going to be hitting somewhere different for you. You're going to be receiving changes in an area that is specific to you. So like for me, gosh, I think Aries is in my fifth house of creativity. So for me, I'm getting a closing chapter on needing to release some area of my life where creativity maybe isn't being expressed, where I'm stunting my creativity, right? And I feel like when the tower pops up, it's an invitation to allow us wherever this is hitting you specifically, it's an invitation for us to decide to let what is not serving us fall away. It is to decide to let it happen. I'm going to tell you something. When you decide, and it takes a lot to get there because as humans, we are silly little creatures. We love to control everything, especially if you've got a lot of Virgo placements like I do. We love to control every little aspect of our lives. We love to try to know what's coming, to predict the future. That's literally why you're here listening to this video, to predict the future and to know every little aspect and get it down to a fine tune so it can feel safe for us. But there is so much freedom in laying down and just saying, you know what, universe, I know that what is meant for me is going to come to me. I know that whatever shows up in my life right now is meant to be here. And I know that the lessons that you bring to me are supposed to happen. 
and I know that I am held and I know that I am supported. And the thing I always like to remind everybody when we talk about this deep sense of surrender, even if it's surrendering into something that feels like it's chaos. When people were surveyed and asked, do they feel like they can take care of nature? People said yes, but then they were asked, do you feel like nature takes care of you? Most people said no. And I'm here to offer you a different perspective. What if you let nature take care of you? Even if we take this down to like the metaphysical level, the energetic level, even if you were to lay back in your bed and surrender and say, okay, whatever comes into my life that is this tower moment that I'm resisting, I'm just going to let go. And whatever happens is going to happen. I'm just going to refuse to try to resist this and I'm going to let go. Even if you were to like lay back in your bed, let's say that you're having like a financial crisis. Okay. I'm a Taurus. I feel like all my examples are always financial. What if you're having a financial crisis right now? You have to realize that you have so much abundance around you. Even laying back in that bed, your bed literally was once an idea that somehow it made its way to you, whether somebody bought it for you or somebody else bought it and then they gave it to you or you bought it yourself with your own hard earned money. However, that came to you. It still at one point in time was traded for currency. Currency is literally always around you. Abundance is literally always around you. And the more that you start to see that, it, it also brings me to the analogy of like, people would say money doesn't grow on trees. What the hell is money made out of? Paper. Yes, money. And what is, what is, what do trees make? Paper. Yes, money does grow on trees. Like, that's what I'm getting at is when you actually let go, open up the scope a little bit and say, you know what, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And I know that whatever happens is for my best and highest good. And you allow the universe to step in and present miracles into your life when you allow this to happen instead of resisting this image of this person. If you're watching the video, I don't know how well you can see it, but this girl is like holding her hair and stressed out. And she is clearly in resistance to this tower falling. And that to me is the hardest lesson of the tower is we always try to resist it. We try to resist things falling apart, not knowing that the falling apart is how they actually fall back together. And the other reason I brought up financial stuff is we got the magician. This is you literally being so powerful, being able to make anything you want happen. The universe conspiring for your benefit. And then we also have, I couldn't believe this when I saw it, <laughs> the king and the queen of pentacles. This is financial stability. This is financial balance. This is receiving a windfall. This is creating a new realm of financial well-being. And if it's not money for you, if you're not struggling financially right now, this full moon could also be just bringing things, especially during a Libra season, right? This is bringing this back into harmony, bringing both the masculine and the feminine representation of abundance back into balance because we got the king and the queen. And when they work together, Oh my gosh, they are the wealthiest mother effers in the world. Like they create such a beautiful balance of not only financial stability, luxury, but they're so well taken care of by mother earth because uh, the pentacles in tarot, they correspond to the element of earth. It's about earthly, the earthly plane and earthly possessions. So if you're worried about losing something on this earthly plane, let nature take care of you. You might think you can take care of nature, but it also works in the reverse. And something I always remind myself, if you're like struggling during this full moon with letting go, with surrendering, with allowing whatever's going to happen to happen, please know that like, I always say the goddess has me. I get that from Mia Magic. That's not, I'm not the first person to say this. I get it from Mia Magic. She's another great resource here on YouTube. Another wonderful, amazing person. Um, but you can say the universe has me. Mama Earth has me. Like, I'm going to be okay because I'm held. Literally the fact that your feet can touch the earth, you are held. 
And something else I wanted to point out, I pulled one more card because I felt like there was something else coming up here. I also pulled the 10 of cups with these. So if you're having relational difficulty throughout this month, which I feel like during Libra season, as we've had all these retrogrades, relationships have been really hard. And this tells me that there is going to be amends made between you and someone else, especially if it's a partnership, if there is like a romantic partnership. I say that because even if you look at like the back of the, the 10 of cups, like the backs of these people, there's two people with their backs turned away on this card, but they're holding each other and celebrating. They almost look like they could be the King and Queen of Pentacles, which is kind of cute in my opinion. Um, I mean, their hair is a little longer in the King and Queen of Pentacles, but I feel like they look very similar. And this to me says that amends is coming. If there's an explosion, because that's what Aries brings to the table, is often an explosion of a conversation, of an argument, of a situation. You know, it's bringing things to a head so that it can clear away. And that's what the tower does as well. It brings things to such a head that maybe we've been pushing away or skirting under the rug or letting slide. That can no longer happen anymore. And Spirit is saying this is for your highest and greatest good. This is to push you forward in some aspect of your life. And if it so happens that it coincides with something relational, know that amends will be made. Things will get better. This is not the final say on these things. And the other thing I want to tell you about this Aries full moon, I think I've said new moon a couple of times and I'm really sorry. It has been a long day. Mercury is still in retrograde while I'm filming this and it's been a very long day for Chloe. I'm a little bit tired. Um, but the other thing I want to tell you about this full moon is this to me is one of the more intense ones. Like we have this full moon in Aries, which often can be very hot headed, very loud, very, um, especially if you're very sensitive, I feel like, and I say that with love, not with like, oh, you're sensitive. Like, no, we love sensitivity on this channel. Um, if you're somebody that's very sensitive, I feel like the Aries full moon can feel very loud. Um, and I'm here to tell you, unfortunately, next month we're going to be in eclipse season. So it's not necessarily going to get easier until after this eclipse season. So November moving into December, I feel like that's really when things will start to ease up quite a bit. But we've been dealing with pretty harsh astrology the last month and a half or so. So... I just wanted to add that, that like this full moon can feel a little loud. It can feel a little bit harsh. It can feel like all these obstacles are being thrown every which way, but I need you to remember that it is safe for you to surrender. It is safe for you to be open to this experience and to remain open during the challenge. And for some of you, you might feel like you close a chapter on something that you have needed to release. It might feel extremely good for some of you. Uh, that's kind of the thing with astrology predictions that you have to keep in mind is that for every person, it's going to hit a little bit different. We might have the same themes where, you know, there's explosion in conversation. We're gaining a new chapter on our physical self and what our personality means as it, or as it not means, but how our, how we present ourselves and our personality outwardly. Those might be very common themes for everyone. However, based on your own natal chart, this could aspect you in multiple places. And the other thing I wanna say is that having Chiron sitting here as well, this full moon has high potential for deep internal healing, especially when it comes to the physical vessel deep internal healing, the way we think about our body, the way that we treat our body and anything that we have really needed to get off of our chest that we've been holding inside. Like this full moon could just be that you releasing like all the ways in which you put yourself down internally and you're starting a new chapter in that way. It doesn't even have to involve other people though. I will say considering I got the King and Queen of Pentacles, I feel like there could definitely be some like partnership amends coming up or um, maybe there is like an explosion with a partner, but know that this isn't going to like end the relationship. Um, but that is ultimately what I have for you for this Aries full moon. Um, I also want to say that this is a really beautiful time to tap into the energy of passion. 
whether it is like a creative passionate endeavor whether it is a passion project this can be a really beautiful time to finish something finish a passion project you've been wanting to finish or um, to reignite your inner fire and your inner passion because maybe it's been lost for a while this is the time period where that has been lacking finally closes and we're able to kind of start anew so i love full moons for this specifically i feel like they give us the power to close a six month cycle sometimes up to like a year and a half cycle depending on where the eclipses are in any given year uh, but honestly they give us the ability to close chapters that were possibly really significant for us and they give us the ability to reconsider the direction we want to go and that's always the opportunity that the full moon brings to the table. So I'll be really excited to do astro forecasting for next month as we get into the eclipse season. I think that's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to look at the astrology for it. But until then, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do not forget when you stand on your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. Don't forget to check out my Patreon if you want more content like this from me, as well as a slew of other things. I would love to have you there on the Patreon. Truly, it means the world to me. We love Patreon in this house. Uh, Patreon is literally why this podcast is possible and why I'm able to continue to make it consistently because it is not one of those projects that I do that like pays any of my bills like that's it's such like a little cute project and it's something I really love to create so uh, if you want to support it I would genuinely appreciate you joining the patreon and you get a bunch of free content or paid content technically for doing it but you get a bunch of stuff i actually feel like as far as patreon goes i feel like i actually put a lot into my patreon like not to say that other people don't but i feel like my patreon i actually deliver on like a lot of stuff every month um i don't just like post a couple of times a month there's like multiple points every single week there's new content so love the patreon uh don't forget to follow the podcast because if this is the only place you're seeing it on youtube if you're just watching the videos you're missing like more than half the episodes that go out because the podcast gets put out twice a week i don't even put one of these videos out every week so you're missing a ton of episodes if you're not listening to the podcast and um there's something else i want oh of course follow me on instagram on tiktok on twitter i'm at chloe taylor uh don't fall for anybody trying to scam you for a reading you can only book readings on chloe taylor.com that's the only place i sell them birth charts and tarot card readings and newly we're doing some moon magic courses so uh if you want to purchase courses for the newer full moon um i don't know that we have a full moon one up yet but we will in time i'll have like a base level full moon course coming out so definitely make sure you're checking chloetaylor.com for those things and uh, I love you so much pumpkin thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one bye oh my gosh it's hot okay listen I'm I need to shave my armpits. Don't judge me. Actually, you know what? Do judge me. Well, actually, I'm really weird about my armpits, but it's for a dumb reason. Like, I feel like I don't like it when people look at my armpits because I don't, I don't shave them very frequently. Like, I just don't. Like, I will let my armpit hair grow so long and then be like, ah, I'll just take the clippers to it. Like, it's fine. Um, I'm not opposed to women having body hair. Like, I think it's weird that we even invented that. But um because body hair like serves a purpose you know but i used to be really weird and be like don't look at my armpits because i couldn't remember if i'd shaved because i'd go so long without so you know what i don't care look you know if you have a weird fetish for armpits like maybe don't look that's not your place okay that's not you i don't have an only pans we're not doing that here anyways i was saying that it's so hot um it was like what is the temperature today let's ask hey siri not. Hey Siri, what's the current temperature? It's about 75 degrees outside. It's not that bad, but what you don't see is I have these huge box lights 
beating down on me. And then I have to have my window closed because y'all know from that episode where I was drinking that the cars are really loud here. Like people, a lot of people drive motorcycles and like loud cars around here. So during the day when I'm filming, if people are coming in and out, it's too loud to have the window open. The fan is also too loud. And so it's just like really hot in here. But the thing that really puts the icing on the cake with this for me is I've been trying to like move cyclically in my life. Like I've been doing a lot physically for my hormone health, like supplementing. And if you want to know more about that, I am going to be recording a podcast this month that will only be in audio format. So make sure you follow the podcast. Um, but I've been doing a lot of like the physical and like none of the spiritual. And I was like, Chloe, you need to start actually living your life cyclically. Like where, at what point do you think you are at right now? Act like it. And I came to the conclusion that based off of like the lunar cycles, I would be in my summer right now. I would be in my like time period of ovulation. I would be in like, I'm summering. That's what I told my husband today. I was like, I'm summering. I'm getting shit done today. Like summer is where you want to like get shit done and you feel like sexy. And like, this is a great time period for me to be like filming because I feel like I look prettier because like literally your hormones when you're in your like summer phase, and again, I'm going to do a bigger podcast on this stuff in the future. But um, when you are summering, like your hormones actually can change the way that your face is like your face will be more symmetrical. Like this is backed by science, like you will become more attractive to because like your body's like trying to make a baby. And so you'll become like more physically attractive, you'll become like more, you start putting off like pheromones and shit. And Um, you're also able to like get more done. You're able to get more done in your day. You have more energy. You have a high, I want to say it's like the time period where you get like a testosterone spike as well. So like, anyways, I was telling my husband I'm summering like, and I have been, I have been literally working almost all day today and my day is closing soon. But like, I just, am like, yeah, I want to like make all this content, do all this stuff and be in my summer element, bitch. So that's where I'm at right now. But like the weather did not need to agree. Like how dare it be almost October 1st for me. It's probably after October now for you. And I think it was like 85 degrees today. How dare you? How dare you be the last week of September for me and be 85 degrees? Not okay. N- no. What What is that saying? It's like, not cool, Robert Frost. Not cool. Um, but I'm summering and the weather is doing it too. And I'm not very happy about that. But you know what? That's okay. Because soon it will be fall and it will be like endless cloudy days. And then I'm going to get sick of that too. Because that's, that's always how it happens. Anyways, um, the stars said no. Bye.